Right guys, welcome back. Um, today we're just going to have a quick look just into weathering our track and um, looking at the type of things that you can do around your railway. Obviously you can go as far as you want with weathering. Um, some people prefer just kind of a light sort of look across the railway and um, just to more focus on the actual locomotives and your, um, your stock and everything like that. Other people prefer to go in um, a lot deeper with it and kind of have a, a really overgrown sort of areas and uh, maybe derelict sidings and everything like that. So we're back with our um, test sample that we made in a previous video and um, just with the double O gauge track here in the ballast. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding one of our buffer stops and um, a few of our greenery pieces and then just giving some general weathering to the track as well. So we're going to start off looking at this double O gauge buffer that we sell. Um, when you do purchase the buffer, it comes in a pack of two, and it's delivered to you um, like this, with the buffer plank detached from the um, frame itself. So we're just going to start off just by attaching that. Um, very simple to do. Everything does come fully painted. Um, so all you're going to do is just put a little dot of some fast drying glue on there, saying no names. And then you're just going to hold that buffer plank just against the frame just until it dries there. You can do this with hot glue if you wanted to, um, obviously PVA, um, it'll just take a little bit longer if you do use PVA, so just be a little bit more patient with it. So once that's holding in place there, um, then you can just actually just test that on your track. So our buffers do just simply slot over the actual rail lines themselves, um, and that's it in place. So you could leave it like that, I say, if, you, if you're happy with that kind of look, and um, they, they do all come fully painted and ready to go. I'm going to actually just apply a little bit of weathering to this. So we're going to start off here. I've just got some charcoal. Um, so I've just taken it just from a charcoal pencil. Just crush that up there. And then it gives a really, really good quick kind of um, way just to weather everything. And just give it a little bit more of a dull sort of coating. So we're just going to give it a flash just all over all the edges. And you will actually kind of see that it does leave a little bit of residue just on the side of the... Um, buffer there as well and it just really just dulls down that paint where it just makes it look a little bit more realistic that it has been out for some time um, exposed to the elements so we're just going to just put that into all of the little nooks and crannies of the buffer our buffers do come highly detailed as well. They've got all of the um, rivet studs in the edges of the steel. So they take really, really well to weathering. It picks up on all those little kind of edges there. So that's great. So that's dulled down the paintwork quite a bit. Um, I'm just going to zoom in just a little bit for you there, just so you can kind of see that. So just a, a lot duller than it was. It's looking good. I'm happy with that. So, what I am going to do as well, is we've just got a little bit of Vallejo paint here. Um, just zoom out a little bit for you. So we've got some Vallejo paint, and um, it's the rust coloured one. And what we're going to do is going to put a couple of drops just in this little dish that I've got here. This is all airbrush safe as well, so you can use it with airbrushes if you're doing larger sections, or obviously you're painting models or anything like that. I'm just going to use it today just with my little brush. So I'm just going to put a few little dots just around kind of where the rivets are. And it does come out in quite a brown colour, um, but once it dries it goes into that, that rust coloured kind of texture as well. So I'm just going to give just a light kind of brushing just around all of the areas where you would see rust. Um, kind of where the steelwork meets and you've got that weld and everything. And quite a bit on the, the corners of the actual metal work as well. And then just around the pistons of the buffer. That's great. So, what we're going to do before we put this on the track, uh, we are just going to apply some rust just to the edge of the rail as well. So just taking exactly the same colour that we've got there um, and we're just going to just run that just down the side of the rail because I'm wanting this to look like it hasn't been used for quite a while. It hasn't been very well taken care of. 
and just making sure that you're missing all of those little ties that hold the rail in place. Um, now in terms of the top of the rail, again depending on how um, used you want your area to look, so I'm going to put the rust along the top of the rail line, I'm just actually just take my finger there and just rub it just back off just slightly. So what that kind of symbolises is that there has been wagons running over here or um, locals running over here every now and again, but just enough time to allow the track to actually rust in between. If you've got quite a, an area that you want to be heavily used but maybe hasn't been maintained too well, I would suggest maybe just rusting the edges of the rail um, because normally what you'll see is if there are um, vehicles travelling over the top of the rail lines it does tend to get rid of that rust and you still have the, the shiny steel visible. So exactly the same on this side. So you can use just a brush with this, um, I'm using this little dabber here, you can fill this one up which is really really nice if you're doing quite a large area, um, whereas I'm just dipping in just because we've got quite a small section to do today, so that's great, um, super, so again that will dry um, a little bit kind of lighter than it is and it will look a lot more kind of realistic, and I'm just going to take just a little bit of charcoal again um, and we're just going to run it just down the centre of the rail there just to give it kind of a darker finish on the ballast itself. So all of our ballast takes really, really well to weathering, and um, that's if you're using dyes, powders, anything like that. So even though it does look subtle um, over a large kind of area, that has a really, really good effect, just to say that the diesel has been kind of dripped down the centre perhaps, um, anything like that and then what I'm going to do I'm going to go a little bit heavier here you can use kind of specialized dye what I like to use actually is just ink and um, so we're just going to take a really really fine syringe and just pull up just a little bit of ink there and then just very 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 delicately we're just going to run that just down the center of the rail line And what that's going to do is just dye the very centre with quite a, a dark black. Put that on there before I knock it over. Um, and then what you're going to do is just take a little bit of oh, isopropyl alcohol. And just on the end of your brush. And I'm just going to just touch that on top of the rail line. On top of the ties, and what that's going to do is just clear out the ink that I've maybe spilt a little bit too much of there. Super. So again, obviously that's quite a a dark way of doing it. It gives you quite a deep colour. So that's super, and that will absorb in as well. It will dry a little bit lighter than it is. Um, Brilliant, so we're just going to put this in place, again you can glue these down if you're wanting it to actually physically be a stopper um, for your for your trains and what have you. I'm just going to place that down there just nice and simply and then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take one of these little grass tufts that we sell, we sell these in a few different colours, um, dip it in a little bit of PVA there and I'm just going to just tuck that just down the side of the buffer itself. And we'll put one a little bit just further back from that as well. So these are great because you can just kind of tear them apart, just make them whatever size you want. Dip them in and we'll put another one there as well. And obviously with it being PVA, it will dry completely clear. Super. And then all I'm going to take here is just a little bit, just a green... Um, so this one is the coarse grass tuft, um, not tuft, sorry, the coarse grass. Um, and we're just going to just put a little bit of that just down the edge of the rail line. Just again to show a little bit of growth just inside the ballast there. So these packs do come in um, quite a large amount really for the amount that you actually need around your layout. Um, so they're really, really good just to add just that tiny little bit of detail. 
and again over a, a large area um, you end up with quite a detailed piece Great. And then we're going to take a little bit of this as well. So this one is the mid green hedge. Um, and we're just going to put just a little bit just over the top of there. Just check what that looks like before we stick it down. And again, just a little dab of PVA and just push that into place where you want it. It's all just about building it up, just doing little bits. You can change it if you want to, if you don't think it quite looks right. Um, and again, you can go in as heavy or as light as you want to with this. So we are going quite heavy with this today. So it's quite nice. I, I just kind of pull it apart, ball it up a little bit between your fingers, um, and then push it down, and it just expands kind of naturally once it's down on the track. So that's great. So I'm just going to put a little bit more greenery just back here. Um, and then we're just going to take just a little bit more of this. Again, just balling it up, dipping it in the glue, and just kind of pushing it down there just against the rail. So there you have it in a couple of minutes, um, just made quite a, a realistic looking scene, really, really effective. And again, you could keep adding to this, you could add even more, um, or, or you can just leave it quite light. With these kind of little bit of grass areas that you put down, you can just leave them as it is if, you put, if your layout is permanently fixed in place, or you can just use a watered down glue solution, as we've mentioned before, and how you stick down the ballast, just put a little dab of that over and it'll stay exactly where it is as well. Um, so that's super. We do also have the um, lights that go in these buffers if you wanted to. We sell them as a set. Um, again, come in packs of two and the lights don't need wiring in, don't need soldering at all. They just clip onto the track and um, reverse the light switch depending on which way your track is facing. So we're just going to take this band off here and you can see kind of that clear separation between our weathered section and our um, clean in kind of cut version as well so really really quick and effective way of adding detail to your layout thank you very much for watching guys and we'll see you again soon